to another episode of Against the Grain. I'm your host, Katie Goodwin, and today I am joined by two of my classmates here at the LA Content Studio. First up, I have TJ Hayes. Hello, hello. And next up, we have Anthony Rivasio. Hello, I'm Rav. Great to meet you guys. <laughs> so, and you guys can give a little bit of background on yourselves. Yeah. You wanna go first? Yeah, um, so basically I am gonna be senior at, at uh, ASU. I met Katie um, this summer, we're doing the same program. Um, I'm doing college wall content on TikTok and Twitter. And it's been a great summer. Um, I'm excited to move forward with what we've learned this summer and to keep going at it, like, you know, for the for the next few, uh, hopefully forever. We'll be fired, <laughs> we can do it forever. Yes, uh, consistency is key. That's the thing That's I think true. that me and you know everyone else here at the, the LA Content Studio this summer has learned is you just got to be consistent. Um, yeah, like Katie had mentioned, I am TJ Hayes. Uh, I'm also a senior from ASU, sports journalism major. Uh, I've had a page for about three years now uh, called the Stallion Sports Network that I came out here to try and grow. But actually, I started a, a little sublet from within that uh, since my unique value proposition is that I am a Packers fan from Chicago. So my thing is uh, enemy territory. Uh, and every week I just do an episode on uh, Packers rivalries and, you know, just games, moments that stuck out to me as, as a Packers fan. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my story. Um, like, you know, like Rav said, I met Katie out here in L.A. So it's definitely uh, it's been a fun summer uh, work but a fun summer nonetheless. And um, yeah, just, just excited to you know get talking. Yeah, and I'll also include their links, social links. We have Rob at Overtime Rob and TJ at Stallion Sports Network. So I'll put them down below on the screen and in the description if you guys want to go follow their content. So as mentioned, they both do sports content and my content is focused on women's sports. So we're gonna kind of see how guys view women's sports through their perspective and just kind of gauge really what goes on in their minds when they watch women's sports. So first off, we're gonna start off with a little bit of trivia to okay. see how much right. you guys really know about Let's women's go. sports. Let's go. So the first question is, which golfer won the most recent major championship? Which women's golfer? Or like yeah, which women's golfer? Man, you know what's crazy is that we watched all the content yesterday of last week, and I remember you mentioned a bunch of the good women golfers, uh, and I cannot think of any of the names. One of them was Thompson, right? Wasn't there yeah. a Thompson? Was it? Was it that? Was she it didn't win. And there was also a, um, a girl you mentioned a few weeks ago that was like really coming on. It's like underratedly, like incredibly good. Rosé. Yes. It wasn't her, but. Oh my God, man! See you for uh, thank that. you. I'm <laughs> I do not know who won the last LPGA okay. major. Was yeah. Major. So that was Allison Corpus. Okay. For the U.S. Women's Open. Okay. All right. Okay. Next question: Who is the most successful female tennis player? So oh, Serena Williams. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No one. One hundred percent. Okay. Which women's professional team has been asking for equal pay? The WNBA. No, the women's the women's national team. Yeah. Come on, teach. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean. I'm I'm just saying, there's been a bunch of leagues that have been asking for that. Yeah, Let's like, just we're keep it above. First. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, the women's national team. Okay. Yeah. Which track star just beat her own record in track and field? Oh man. What's? Oh man. <laughs> is it, this might be old, but is it Allison Felix? No. Nah, she's got to be like way so old, like years ago. <laughs> I forget her name, man, but Drake mentioned her in a song. Really? And yes. I think it might have been her. I think her name starts with an S. I can't, like, it figure does, it out, though. Yes. Oh, my God, man. See, it's at the tip of my tongue, man. Oh, my God. And she, she wasn't able to compete in the Olympics, too, right? No, she did. She did? Okay. Oh, I know who you're thinking of, though. It's not her? You're thinking of Shikari Richardson? Not her. That's not who it is. And then I don't know. I don't know either. Sydney McLaughlin. Oh. <laughs> okay. Last question. Who won the 2022 WNBA championship? Oh, I know. Aces, right? yes. 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 Hey. Yeah, okay. Shout out Vegas, man. So Shout out Vegas. Like two for five, three for five. Three, three for five. Yeah. Still failing grade. <laughs> it's but, okay. It's all right. Better than that. Let me ask one thing. 
How fast can you answer who won the 2023 Super Bowl? Oh, like pretty quickly? Yeah. Exactly. So it kind of shows like the differences of how aware we yeah. are in women's sports. And I know like for me, even I have to look up some answers sometimes. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, like I don't have to look up who won the Super Bowl or who won the NBA championship because it's blasted everywhere. Whereas like women's sports aren't, you know, as covered as much. So how do you guys see women perceived in the media, women athletes in the media, their coverage, kind of what's your take on that? Well, I can tell you that it's, I feel like it's been better within the last um, four years. Yeah, I'd agree. say that like all, not uh, mostly, or most of the national media coverage has definitely, um, or national media outlets have tried to make a better, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Push. Yes, like yeah. make it more of a push towards um, including like women's sports coverage more and like national coverage um, and try and you know because of course it's for all it's forever been like men's sports and you know what's going on with all that stuff, but especially like this year I feel like for the women's March Madness for example mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like that are and I think it, this actually was true a lot of those games were watched more than the women's and it was because of the storylines that were pushed by the national media with like Caitlin Clark, yeah. the Iowa player and Angel Reese, Angel Reese mm -hmm. the LSU player. Yeah. And all of the I feel like the, the W or the the women's um March Madness was a massive success this year. And people were like actually watching and loving it. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's better recently, but it's yeah. definitely um only work in progress yeah i would say like just being like not super like aware i guess or or maybe as involved in women's sports um as per se like maybe to football or basketball or anything else um the one thing that i've noticed uh as a basketball fan is that the WNBA has been pushed very heavily uh in the last four to five years and i think that's great uh for the game and not only just the game but growing the sport as a whole, right? Not just nationally and worldwide. And so, yeah, I mean, the Aces, they just won last year. And I believe they have like a bunch of like really good players. They're mm -hmm. almost like kind of created their first super team, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know that, you know, dynasties draw attention, super teams draw attention. So I think um, maybe it's on the onus of the players. You know, I don't know if they were traded to the, to the team or if they had the decision themselves, but um, maybe they're kind of like reflecting and being like, hey, you know, why don't we create something special? And by doing that, you know, like in March Madness too, having those special storylines, then the media coverage is, is uh, amplified 100%. Mm -hmm. So that on top of, yeah, I think a lot of uh, other women's sports have just been massively covered a lot more. And, and I believe ESPN has like the ESPN W uh, page. Yeah. yeah, a lot of sports outlets are coming with like women's outlets and cover more and it's not even just like them having their own page i feel like they're also doing those collab posts so it's like if you follow mm -hmm. espn and then espnw does a collab post with espn even if you don't follow espnw is coming into your feed right yeah. so that's a great way of them trying to really engage uh, a broader audience which i think is great mm -hmm. yeah and you like i remember with the whole women's march madness thing and the branding of that you know how they were like oh like why is ours having to be branded with women's yeah. when the men's is just pure march madness what do you guys think about that do you think it should be just march madness do you think it should be men's and women's march madness yeah maybe like give each tournament like a specific designation like this mm -hmm. is the men's march madness and this is the women's march madness instead of just calling one march madness then the other women's don't they not happen at the same time I think they're a little bit off. Yeah, I think right? they are a tiny bit off. Yeah. yeah. Like you, a couple days or something. Do you I think they're round? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to ask both of you guys, like, do you think that is good or bad that they have, like, a little overlap? Do you think they should have separate time schedules so that more people can tune into one or the other? Or do you think they should be at the exact same time and just kind of challenge the consumer to be like, you know, which do you prefer? Um, which draws, you know, the most attention and then them try and market it from that. I hate to say it, but I think what you can do is use the men to get more attention to the women. Kind of use that viewership time to advertise the women because mm -hmm. you know that a lot of people are going to be watching that March Madness and you can be like, hey, we're building the excitement up 
for women's march yeah. wellness and i think on those off days too where it's like in between the championship rounds you can have the first bracket the first round starting and kind of like have people get something to watch on those off days yeah that's smart that's definitely smart um i think that's yeah it's a good idea yeah. uh, i know there's like conversations sometimes you know whether it's nba owners talking about nfl teams like you know oversaturating the market with mm -hmm. just too much sports all the time but honestly i, I don't think that's ever going to be a problem no to be honest with no, you no it's not but yeah what do you think I think it um, is good that they um, plan it on different days because um, to me, if say for example, that March Madness is in like the semi, the, the men's March Madness is in the semifinal round and then um, on like a Sunday, okay? And it's been a few days since like the round before that because at that point it's, um, you know, like you take like multiple days between each round just to give the players rest. It's good because people are craving to watch basketball. Put like if you have the um, women's games, where it's the championship game, for example, like on a Saturday, and then the men's like previous round the next day, then people will be inclined to watch a championship game of basketball the day before the same round. It's, like they could be the same weekend. It could be like a whole, you know, extravagant thing. I think it would be even cooler if they made them the same location because then you could have all the people that are there for that would be dope. for yeah. for both games to watch both. You know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I see it. I don't know if you see it a different way or if it could be like a, if there's like a better way to do it. But I feel like right now it's like to maximize it. I feel like they're doing the right thing. Yeah, I like the same location idea. Because I know for golf, they've done it a couple of times for like the US Open, it's worked very well. They're doing it next year, I think, for the US Open yeah. or something, sometime soon. They do it for tennis and it works really well. Um, so yeah, I definitely think same location. But. I was gonna say too, um, I know one thing that like you've mentioned a lot throughout like this entire summer is that, you know, in the golf space um, with women's golf and stuff that the men uh, don't really support the women mm -hmm. necessarily and they almost kind of are standoffish in a way um, especially you know not just competition but you know clubs whatever and the one thing that I think you know that's on the onus of the men in the sport because when I look at basketball or I look at other sports I feel like the men are very supportive of the women like and you know we've been talking about basketball for the last you know five ten minutes and it's like why? Because I see guys in the NBA wearing WNBA sweatshirts, you know, they're going to the, the, the games, right? They're going to the championship stuff. Um, they're supporting these, these players, not only just by showing up, but also posting about it, right? So I think, yeah, I mean, as far as advancing any women's sport, I think it definitely comes on like the onus of the men, but also the women too, to support each other. Yeah, it's definitely a lot like with golf with tradition, you know, the, it started with the men, it's kind of like, and known as like a more elite sport and I feel like you know like having money having that status it's kind of always been linked to men mm -hmm. and so it's kind of just now coming down to breaking the standards and becoming more of a modernized sport and you see sports like basketball and soccer and stuff like that where the men's professionals are starting to support the women in the professional leagues and vice versa and you just don't always get that in golf whether it's professionally or in the club, amateur yeah. circle yeah so it's definitely very interesting but how much do you guys watch or consume women's sports whether it's on tv or social media i honestly don't really watch a whole lot to be honest um but that's all because i'm not really informed on like when mm -hmm. stuff is happening um that's probably on me uh more so than than anyone else but you know when my priorities, I guess, like of what sports that I say that I want to cover or what sports that I want to be informed on, like just for instance, the NFL, right? Or let's say the NBA, that within itself already consumes so much of my time that it's hard to kind of stay interconnected with like this, that, and the third. So 
yeah, I would say not too much right now, but I would definitely be inclined to try and start getting into it. You know, like I was just saying with um, with the WNBA, I mean, the, the storylines are coming out of there and the girls that had just competed in the championship in NCAA, um, they're now in the league. So, I mean, that's that's cool to just like follow those storylines, um, follow those players. Um, so, yeah, I, I think more so going forward, uh, I'll, I'll definitely try and make an effort, or at least I think it's going to be covered more so, so that I can see and know when. Yeah. I feel like, honestly, I watch a salt amount. Um, I have two sisters. The one is a very good and still young volleyball player, but she um, obviously loves to watch, like, you know, the girls that are older than her, like, play volleyball. And I know that women's volleyball women's collegiate volleyball gets a ton of good viewership and it's actually a huge event um every i think it's you know the winter time um whenever i'm home for for, for winter break it's like the only thing that's on tv um in our house so i i feel like i watch uh at least when volleyball on women's volleyball is so fun like i feel like that i i actually tweeted this like a long time ago and it actually did well, and I think other people agree. Um, if when, I feel like women's volleyball would be a better professional sport than women's basketball, because women's volleyball is um, it's fun, it's fast, it's like moving, it's like it's just fun. It's fun to watch. Um, but other than other than women's volleyball, like the women's World Cup is on this year. I feel like every four years when that happens. Everyone tunes in to watch that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I definitely will watch that. The WNBA could definitely be something I could watch more. I do see a lot of commercials for it. Um, but a lot of it is also on like NBA TV, which is yeah. a, you need a subscription for that. And I do have a subscription for NBA TV, but um, not, not all, not all people do. too. <laughs> exactly. And they are occasionally like on ESPN or ESPN2 or other, other channels that most people get. But I feel like, um, maybe with the increased or with the continued social media um, boost that the uh, that women's sports are getting, I feel like the, the WMA is going to continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, well, I agree with that. I mean, I wish the World Cup was on more than <laughs> yeah. once every four years because they, they dang better than the men's, man, for real. Like, yeah, they, they whoop every, every freaking time yeah, they're in there. So I think they're going for a three-feet. That's dominance right there. Yeah. That's so, dominance. Oh, I mean, what have the men done in the past <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> like, I don't know. But what do you think would be needed to bridge the gap between men and women? Like, to have that equality that the women are striving for? Um, I mean, I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. Just, you know, not only on the men, right? Like, and that puts me in that same shoe, right? Mm -hmm. Of, like, supporting them, watching them. But I also think it really comes down to the women and supporting each other as well. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, they're competitive, right? They want to win. They want to watch other people lose. That's like crazy to think, but like they actually, like I enjoy sometimes watching other guys lose. So like just whether I'm loving or hating on what I'm watching, what I'm consuming, um, yeah, it like brings eyes, right? So I think whether women want to support or like hate on each other. Like, I don't really see that from like a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. I feel like women are so much more like loving and caring. Like, like they want to support. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like when you talk about like when you go out to the golf course and stuff, like, and you see like a girl there, it's like, oh, let's go girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like you guys are supporting each other. So <laughs> I feel like it's a little bit different for guys, like when they consume sports to when like women consume sports. Mm -hmm. But I think it needs to it needs to be like uh more women i think to just like continue that growth and, and yeah. support um so yeah i mean i honestly agree with them and i feel like that i go back to the kate and clark and uh, angel reese stuff that stemmed from one of the two like barking at the other yeah <laughs> i forget what the what it was about i think i don't know if they played each other they might have but think they did um they might have played each other in the regular season and then they were like trying to see who would make it farther in, in the tournament and they were like even talking trash about each other when they weren't mm -hmm. even playing about each other yeah. or playing each other because they were being provoked by the media yeah. and i feel like that 
like turned a lot of eyeballs in that direction. So I don't know. I don't want to say that, you know, provoking like, you know, stuff like that is, is going to draw more eyes, but it is entertaining. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely probably other ways that are, you know, just as good, if not better, but that's just one that comes to my head. And, you know, TJ kind of nailed the, yeah. put the nail, hammered the <laughs> nail on that. Yeah, for sure. I know it's kind of like, at that point, you almost have to do whatever you have to do to get eyes on you. And if it's like, okay, well, this is what I need to do. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And, and I also think too, like, like you said, Rav, like the media, right. Mm -hmm. Kind of provoked a lot of this. And like, that is like the piece that I think is also so crucial too, to just getting more eyes on women's sports in general. It's like the media and just how much they prioritize talking or trying to start stuff that maybe there is nothing there to start. Like, I mean, the amount of times I watch like Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp talk about LeBron James, like, and make storylines out of nothing. So like, I mean, they could do the same thing with women's sports. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's just like on, on the media too. Really. Yeah, that definitely was in the media too. They were, people were arguing with each other in the media about what was going on between those two, yeah. about uh, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reeves. So yeah. like, which one's right, which one's wrong? Yeah. And it was yeah. definitely like a national debate. It was, it was. Okay, yeah. so last question for y'all. What would you say to men who are hesitant or resistant to watching women's sports? Find the sport that you think you'd like the most, or maybe just watch all of them, and then, you know, look at or find the one you like, and then give it a shot, because I didn't think that I would like women's volleyball as much as I did, and now I freaking love watching <laughs> women's volleyball. Um, so I'd, I'd say that, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of along the same lines, um, if you just like to watch people compete, you just gotta find your little niche, you know, and, and find the one that speaks to you the most. Um, I, I've always said, like, I love supporting, like, women that, like, compete at a high level, like, not, like, out loud, but, like, for example, like, the other day I was playing basketball uh, at, at an open court, right? And there was a girl that wanted to play. And I was like, yeah, let's go, like, come on. Like, I, I love that when that happens because it's like, She's obviously, you know, one in a bunch of other dudes playing, but it's like you want to support them, you want to make them feel comfortable, you want to also see them compete and see what they've got. So I think that also like stems too with like watching the sports is like just supporting them um, and watching, you know, competitive stuff happen. Um, so yeah, it comes down to the onus of the guys and the girls and yeah. I also think that, sorry to interrupt. Um, <laughs> I also think that like say for example, where this is a this is a like a women's golf podcast. Yeah. Men who watch golf, if they gave, you know, if first of all, if the LPGA were better, like I feel, I don't know, is it broadcasted just on on like the on the golf channel? Most of the time, yeah. So if it were like more available to watch, especially for like male golfers, I feel like they would be just as intrigued to watch the LPGA just as mm -hmm. much. As they watch PGA, or I guess PGA and Liv now, but... Yeah, I know. Another, another Shout topic. out Liv. Liv could be a... No! <laughs> oh, shout out Liv! <laughs> uh, no, I'm just trying to stir the pot, man. I'm just trying to stir the pot. That's, That's a whole another episode. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that might have to be part two. <laughs> no, but honestly, we need more people like you guys in the sports world, just kind of supporting everyone. And also with your own content, you know, doing what you guys do, which is really incredible. I've been really fortunate to watch you guys do amazing things. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, seriously. Yeah. But again, you guys, we have Stallion Sports Network, TJ Hayes, and Overtime Rob, Anthony Ramosio. Thank you guys so much for yes. being here yeah, today. For sure. Hopefully we'll see you back sometime. Yeah, maybe on Zoom after after we're gone. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's gonna be a little different to. now, not being out in LA, man. I know, I know. But viewers and listeners, thank you so much for watching or listening. I hope to see you guys on the next episode of Against the Grain. I'm your host, Katie Goodwin. Bye, everyone.